Hi everyone and welcome to the video. Today we are going to look at some of the most fascinating snake TikToks from around the globe. I'm going to try and make it as interesting as possible, but at the same time if something needs debunking, we're going to do it. Let's get started. Good job. Oh dear. Yeah, so that was a big Burmese python opening a door. And something they never tell you about the, the really big snakes, well, I guess even the medium to big snakes, say boa constrictors and up, um, is that, I mean, they're not likely to attack you if you keep one as a pet, but if they do escape, um, they will climb on everything. If they get onto your shelves, they will knock all your ornaments off, you'll find everything smashed because they wiggle along and they're so big and heavy that they just knock off on the floor. So that's something to think about. This is the Arabian sand boa, and it's widely regarded, at least by me, as the derpiest snake on the planet. They're native to the deserts of Iran, and get this, Arabia. They have eyes on top of their head because they spend a majority of their life beneath the surface, hunting prey after dark. Leave a comment down below if you think those guys are derpier looking, or this sand viper in front of you. So yes, Arabian sand boas are a bit goofy looking. It's quite interesting that they've got the eyes on top of their head like that, because it's to see above, I guess, what you'd call a substrate, above the sand, above the ground. Um, but what's fascinating is you also see the same adaptation in animals that live in water or spend a lot of their time in water. So capybaras, gators, um, what else? A few other things probably that I can't think of right now. Also have the eyes situated on top of the head and the nostrils on top of the head to see above water. But where the Arabian sand boa gets really interesting is the fact that it lays eggs, but its babies don't have egg teeth. And scientists have thought about that, and there's only one way they can think that it makes sense, and that is that it was once an egg-laying snake, you know, millions of years ago or whatever, then it evolved to become a live-bearing snake, and then it re-evolved eggs. And there's a, a principle in evolutionary biology called Dolo's Law, which says that once you lose something, you can't re-evolve it perfectly. So they've tried to become egg layers again, and it's not quite working. Wow. So that looked like a carpet python. Um, so yeah, the old, the, the old belief that snakes will attack you isn't true. They very, very rarely try to eat people. But yes, they will try and eat your pets. Well-respected Colonel, I'm sure, Jamie, you'll be able to find this very quickly. A well-respected, like, I forget, he had like his wings or his, his patch of honor or whatever, like very distinguished, who him and his two passengers in the plane both reported a hundred foot long snake. They flew over it once. They're like, wait a minute, what is that? They were, they were Dutch Belgium in the Congo. Um, they flew over it once, went, what is that? And flew over it two more times to verify it and got so low to the ground that they said the snake struck at the airplane and all three people, the pilot, this well-respected colonel and the two passengers had the exact same story of this giant snake in Central Africa. Interesting. Yeah, and yet no big snake has ever been proven from there. But it's also a very poorly biologically explored area. And most of the time, when these animals get this big, snakes or otherwise, they're in very low... Yeah, here... There's not a serious biologist on the entire planet that believes that story. Not one. That was a reticulated python. Um, I've seen that clip on so many like news outlets and, and all kinds of stuff, and it's it's kind of a lot to a lot to get into there. So it may have eaten a dog, or may may not have. I don't know. 
but what we're actually looking at there is if you look closely it, it looks like it's swimming and people have said oh it's swimming but it's not it's actually belly up you can see that row of ventral scales down the middle uh, it has eaten something it's bloated but even when they are bloated with a meal and they're alive and it makes them float a bit they do it right way up so that is a snake because you can see it's making no forward progress it's not moving forwards up the column of water it's actually stuck underneath on something and so it's actually a stuck snake whether it's giant or not you know who can tell at that distance So that was a, um, caught me out just as I was about to drink. That was a sunbeam snake. I believe they are in the Xenopeltidae family. The genus name is Xenopeltis, which roughly translates to odd scales. Um, and that amazing iridescence you can see is due to something called structural coloration. So rather than reflect various lights back at you, its scales actually have this microscopic structure within them that takes in light and diffracts it and scatters it into the the colors of a rainbow basically so they are an amazing snake the only thing i would say about them is that i've, I've talked to people who've tried to keep them as pets or who have kept them as pets uh, you can keep them alive but they basically spend all their time borrowing so they're amazing to look at when you do see them but most of the time you just won't see them did you know about flying snake flying snakes are a group of snakes known for their remarkable ability to glide through the air they do not truly fly in the way that birds or bats do, but certain species of snakes, such as the paradise tree snake, can glide through the air by flattening their bodies and using the undulating motion to control their direction. Follow for more. That information was all perfect, all correct. They're not capable of powered flight like a bird or a bat because they're not generating power. They're harnessing power using sort of lift, I guess you'd call it. Um, What's interesting about the flying snakes is they are, they are native to mostly southern and southeast Asia, or totally southern and southeast Asia. And in southeast Asia especially, there are other flying animals. There's colugos, which are a kind of weird flying mammal. There's even a flying frog in Borneo. And the, the reason that there's so many gliding animals, I should say gliding really, because we've just discussed that, um, in southeast Asia is because that matches the exact same range, well, there's a lot of hill country, you've got to say that, there's a lot of, you know, changes in elevation, but that also matches the distribution of the, dip, well, what are they called, dipterocarp trees, I think, maybe the dipterocarpacea, um, I hope I've got that right, you can look it up anyway, and that's a family of trees which gets very, very tall and tends to jut above the canopy. And all this, that kind of adds to this difference, exaggerates the difference in elevation. So it means that it is like a gliding animal's dream location, basically. It can go from the top of a tree to as far away from danger as it likes. And it really makes it a worthwhile kind of mode of life, I guess you'd call it, a worthwhile adaptation to have. So that was a Transpicos rat snake, and the the content creator has put some kind of you know spectacles on there to make its eyes look even more bug-eyed. But in real life, that species does actually have bug eyes. It has really big eyes. It never kind of grows out of it. It's not a baby or anything. And the only reason I can think of is probably because it's nocturnal, and it's quite slender. So maybe being slender helps it get into rock crevices to hunt, and the big eyes help with nocturnal vision. That's that could be the reason why. Okay, was called this morning for a guy that said he saw a snake in one of his running shoes. Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, rattlesnake. Oh, oh. Wow, 
That is so gross. is an angry rattlesnake. He's already struck three times. Oh, he's pulling back in the shoe. Oh, yes. And I'm just going to drop the whole damn shoe in the bucket. Always important to check your shoes. If you live somewhere where there are rattlesnakes like that, there's likely to be centipedes and scorpions as well. So, yeah, I'm in the habit of checking my shoes now. Even though I haven't been abroad in a year or so, I still check them. I'm in England, so <laughs> it doesn't hurt. I'm pretty sure that was the white-lipped island pit viper, um, Trimerosaurus insularis. Really, really cool snake. A lot of us tend to think of pit vipers and, and think of the, the US and South America, um, but they're actually really widespread in Asia. I've heard some of them are reasonably docile, but I wouldn't actually test it myself. This is a baby western hognose snake. And this is their super cool defense mechanism. They act like they're dying and then play dead completely so predators won't go after them. The dramatic performance even includes a mouth open with the tongue out to be convincing. That's so funny as well with hognose snakes. Um, where, I, where I was when I was a kid, there was eastern hognose snakes. And a lot of them, they're so committed to the routine that if you flip them over, they'll just keep turning back over. They might keep it up for like five minutes, which you know obviously tells you they're actually alive. The other strange thing with western hognose snakes is that they will almost never ever bite you but the day they accidentally bite you because they're hungry and they're trying to get like a, a meal you're giving them then they'll just chew and chew and chew and hang on. <laughs> Another thing that's worth remembering about them. So it was a rattlesnake giving live birth. Can't remember what species that is, if I'm completely honest. Um, most snakes across the world, they do lay eggs, but there are a considerable number of live bearing snakes. If you know why that is advantageous and what the benefits are, let me know in the comments. How crazy is this? Two big male carpet pythons fighting whilst hanging out of the roof at a home in Kin Kin. Now there's some construction workers there. They're about to take the roof off and they've been seeing snakes all day and he's just sent me through this video. Insane. Look at the size of that male. It is huge. It is thick. They reckon it's over three meters. And I would believe that because they get that big out there. And the smaller male, well, he's fallen out of the roof. He lost the battle this time. But as you can see, he's still looking for a bit more action. He wants to continue fighting. What a crazy scene that these guys have stumbled across. We're actually going to be heading out there and doing a roof inspection as they take the roof off for the safety of the uh, construction workers as well as the snakes. This is going to be awesome. Wow we. So a lot of the um, a lot of the python species, like really mostly the small to medium species of python, do these ritualistic combats where they intertwine and they push each other, and it's basically a wrestling match. And what's really interesting about it is they don't each other. Um, so they'll do this combat, strongest one wins, the other has to leave, uh, strongest one gets to mate with the others. Uh, and that, that actually makes them smarter than humans, if you think about it, because they're less likely to kill each other than we are. Right, my official advice as a uh, zoologist is don't let snakes crawl up your pants, even if you think you can trust them.
that was the new species of anaconda that was discovered. Now I've seen a lot about that one in the news and it's been kind of sensationalized as always, as they always do. Um, and they made it sound like someone's gone out and discovered this new anaconda, it just popped up somewhere. What actually happened was that they went to a population of anaconda, which people have known about for a long time, you know, green anacondas, did some DNA analysis on this, um, this kind of group, this population, which was hard to get to previously. Um, and they decided based on genetic differences, it was a different species. So a lot of the time, when you do hear this in the news, that new species has been discovered of snake or whatever, it's not really been discovered, it's been decided. We've said, you know what, genetically, we think this is different enough to call it a new species. And some people, um, some taxonomists, um, actually debate what a species is. So it's all a little bit murky, but it's still very interesting. I certainly wouldn't take away anything anything from the scientists that have gone out and done the work. I just like to get these things clear because I don't really like sensationalizing everything. Anyway, I hope this has been a fun video. Um, I think hopefully I'm going to learn some stuff from your comments about some of these snakes as well to add to my knowledge. That'd be really great. If you did enjoy this, please do like, share, comment, subscribe. And what would be even more helpful would be if you let me know what you'd like to see next. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh,